understand about how beautiful that our lives can be, but we got a lot of work to do, and we got a lot of teaching to do, and we got a lot of learning to do. Sometimes that learning and teaching they are wrapped up together, and that's a beautiful gift. Sometimes um, talking about these kind of things, uh, Indigenous law, Indigenous justice, isn't always about writing things down or about a conference. Sometimes it's best expressed in, in other ways. So anytime throughout the day, if you need a break from the room, then please go. Um, you don't need to have any experience. Probably even I could be creative over there. I'm from Whitefish River First Nation, and I found out by the symposium by actually my boss, because I'm the right to play community mentor, and she just asked me to go out with a few youth, so I'm here with a few youth. Indigenous environmental justice means to me is more just seeing the truth about things, no more covering up spills or covering up anything, it's more seeing what's out there and telling the truth about it. That's what the whole justice point for me is. So. The one drawing I drew was of a stump. Like, it was like clear-cutted and there's a flower like bloomed out in the middle. I've actually seen that once before when I was a couple years younger, but <laughs> it was in a time of rough point, but at the same time, it made me see the beauty in the small things and how beauty can grow from something that is just ugly. Bonjour, I am from Chipotle Thames First Nation. I'm in um, and I descend from the uh, Loon and the Wolf clans. Um, I came here today in support of my mom, who is uh, a, a featured artist here at the symposium, and also just to hear, uh, I guess, the latest dialogue and conversation around climate justice, um, as it is obviously a, a very pressing issue um, to all Indigenous people, to human beings, to all life here on Ashkakimkwe. Uh, so for me, as you know, someone coming from the East Coast, obviously um, someone who identifies, white identified, um, it's important for me today to spend more time listening and a little bit less time talking and um, just trying to, um, trying to reach a deeper understanding of, um, of uh, the struggle of Indigenous people and um, hopefully carrying some of that back to inform some of our work um, that, w that we do in Atlantic Canada. I didn't really know much about Indigenous environmental justice and so I wanted to come as a learning experience. This environmental issues is the, not the current issue, it is the, the generational issues. Um, I think it all stems from being a mother, to be honest. Uh, when I became a mom, I just I realized what kind of future I wanted for my kids. What brings me here more than anything is just learning as much as I can learn to teach my kids and, and all the kids I work with the community. So um, youth, children, uh, how can I change programs or how can I um, make programs that are reflective of, of, of the issues that need to be addressed. The Dish With One Spoon Wampum is a pre-contact wampum 
uh, pre-contact discussion between the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabes. And this wampum is about environmental justice. It's the one of the original documentations of Indigenous environmental justice. That one dish, or the dish with one spoon wampum, is to represent an understanding of three teachings. That this dish, this environment, this world we live in, has everything that we need. However, it is important for us to remember we only take what we need, we keep the dish clean, and we also make sure that there's something in it for others, including keeping the dish, so we don't destroy the dish. Indigenous environmental justice to me means restitution, it means decolonization, um, it means a resurgence of practice of indigenous knowledge um, and its presence in, in the landscape and on the land. Indigenous environmental justice means to me an understanding that I feel should be inherent and implicit in, in all people that we live here with within and with and as part of an environment and understanding ourselves as part of that seems just like a, a, a very natural and logical way of being and I would love it if that was just if that was justice <laughs> it didn't need to be qualified as a special kind of justice but th th that really should be our understanding environmental justice means to me that it's coming from a holistic perspective so it's not just um, making sure the land is biologically healthy it's making sure or, or trying to ensure that relationships are healthy as well so people are humans are living in a right relationship and um, with the earth, but also in right relationship with the animals, with the insects, with the elements, um, with everything. Ishita means we are ready. People be saying make it when you're ready to listen. So I, I I tell people when I when I when I see them I, I say listen. Start listening to the environment, listening to the waters, listen to the wind, the trees, every every aspect of our humanness has has life. Trees have life. Tikanabe we call them. They have life. The air. The air we breathe has life, everything has life. The rocks, the water, especially the water has life. It can speak to us if we listen very carefully. When I can, I go down to, to, the, to the lakes and I, me and my mom sing the water song. And we close our eyes just to listen to the water because it's a, it's a very beautiful, calming sound. I've been taught many things throughout my life. Um, I've been taught to care for the environment. I've been taught to care for our water, to respect our water, because I was, I was brought to the world by water. Everything and everyone needs water. We need to be just really happy to even have just one sip of water every day. Uh, my picture really just kind of shows um, that water is kind of, water is life, we all know that. Water is kind of what is needed in order to make things grow. Why would we put things in the water that shouldn't be there? Like, I feel like in very few generations, people will look back and see us as making a lot of mistakes at this time. When I think about climate justice, I think about um, our motif, our visual language and our aesthetic uh, as Anishinaabe people. I sat down and I started to draw our, our floral designs um, that define us as Anishinaabe people. I always wanted to learn what uh, the flowers were and where they were located in our territory as well. I feel like it's been kind of this lifelong journey of, of 
locating our motifs our, of our visual aesthetic as Anishinaabe people within the landscape. It requires decolonization and also touches on climate justice too um, because we do know that a lot of our species are at risk um, and the ones that are showing up in our motifs, are they at risk as well? Like that's just kind of this journey or this um, um, this question that I'm always asking when I'm uh, on my land and in my territory. I think as, as human species we have that responsibility um, of being educators and nurturing kids, right? Like if you look at them, they're, they're like a seed and it's our responsibility to, to nurture and make sure that, you know, they have that support around them, that they feel um, able to, to grow and have equitable uh, resources around them, you know, to, to make them, I guess, change the things that need to be changed. The biggest thing that stuck with me was um, Josephine when she was just saying, like, just do it, like, get out. There's so many stories out there that people don't tell, but you should, like, show your voice and really show people, like, who you are as a person. For the past few months, I've been traveling around Mother Earth talking about climate change and ha going to all these meetings. Um, it's like, it's hard to think having all these meetings, is anything even going to be done? And just waiting, our water is going to get really sick. We're not going to be able to drink our water. The discussion of climate ju justice requiring decolonization um, was really, really impactful for me. Realizing that it, uh, climate change, as is caused by colonialism, um, is much more systemic and pervasive than I was initially um, prepared to, to <laughs> um, think about, I guess. It was a little, it was, I mean, the, the pieces were all there, um, but just having that kind of threaded together and illuminated, I think was really, really powerful um, and makes it a lot more urgent in terms of our work as Indigenous people, as, as Anishinaabekwe, um, to be working on um, those connections, making the, the connections between climate justice, um, the, the systemic injustice of, of colonialism and genocide, and um, our collective future as humans. Our original teachings talk to us that we come from the sky world. We're sent from Garanyage, where the creator is, and he sends us here with a duty to fulfill, a job to do. He sends us here and we go to the earth. We, ride, we, in, we reside inside the earth, and uh, when we reside inside the earth, we wait for our mothers to walk over top of us. We come up to the soles of their feet, and over a period of time, as a spirit being, we assume a human form. So that process within nine months allows us to be able to do that, and we're born into the world, a spirit being wrapped in a human form. When we live here for a period of time, we have a duty and a purpose to fulfill, is that when we, our, our time is up, our body and our spirit split and our body goes back to our mother, the earth, and we're wrapped in her arms again and our spirit waits here until we send it back to Garon Hyage, back to the creator. Somebody said something about that when you destroy the earth, you destroy yourself. It's like, well, it's even more so than that, that when we understand that all of those coming faces are inside of the earth, and you've probably heard that saying where they talk about walk softly on the mother earth because you're walking on the faces of coming generations. This is not a, these are not indigenous issues. These are not indigenous environmental issues. These are human issues. These are environmental issues that are, have a human face to them. This is really about the restoration or more specifically the revitalization of human spiritual integrity. And that's where we need to go. You wanna revitalize, you wanna be a real human being? Revitalize yourself spiritually. And however you understand that concept to be, Engage with the, large, with the world around us in an enlightened fashion. Raise your consciousness and engage with others and learn how to live in place. Learn how to live like you're going to stay.